Hi folks, there are many things that you can do with Windows 11. Today we're gonna make a much faster and more reliable internet connection that would enable us to install a lot of new software on Windows 11. And in the end we're gonna discuss how you can find Windows 11 software for ARM64 architectures. You can install very interesting software, even the one that can run AI from your own computer. Watch the video to see how you can make the most of your Windows 11 on your Raspberry Pi 5. There has been a very nasty problem right from the beginning of Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 5. There is no device driver for the Ethernet interface or even Wi-Fi interface. So RNDIS driver has to be used to access the Internet. However, until now you would only be able to use your smartphone to connect to Windows 11 to the Internet. But there are also other options. I've tried using two Raspberry Pi 5s and I succeeded. I used one running and Android 14 and the other one running Windows 11. The one running Android 14 shared its Ethernet connection to the one running Windows 11. It's not difficult to do, but you have to know a few tricks. If you intend to give away your Raspberry Pi 4, don't do it, because you can use it as an interface to connect to Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 5 to the Internet. However, to test this method, it was the easiest way for me to use two Raspberry Pi 5s, because I have triple boot on both. So I can do Windows 11 or Android 14 or Raspberry Pi OS bookworm. So the easiest way is to use Android 14 to share its Ethernet connection through the fifth USB port that is usually used for powering Raspberry Pi 5. You have to use an alternate powering method for the Raspberry Pi 5 running Android 14. This is not really difficult because you can either power it from the Ethernet, you can do this with power over Ethernet head, or you can power it from any kind of powerful enough 5 volts source. I used an industrial 30 ampere power supply. It's real powerful and it can provide a very stable voltage to Raspberry Pi 5 and it doesn't really cost very much. It can easily power up to 6 Raspberry Pi 5s at full load, so this means 6 times 5 ampere. The original Raspberry Pi 5's power supply costs about 18 euros and this industrial 150 watts power supply is about 23 euros. However, because you are running your Raspberry Pi 5 from a power supply that is unable to report its performance to Raspberry Pi power management chip, you have to provide this information yourself. One option is to alter the EEPROM configuration and to add a line PCU max current and write the number of amperes in milliamperes. So in my case I went to 10 amperes, so it is over the top. It's much more than 5 amperes and uh, of course Raspberry Pi 5 can use 10 amperes easily but more than 10 amperes I wouldn't do anyway. Okay, I don't think that this has any effect uh, more than 5 amperes because uh, 5 amperes is a designed current. However, there is another setting that you can use in configuration.txt file. USB max current enable. If you set it to 1, maximum current would be available to USB ports regardless whether your power supply can report its performance. I've attached an old-fashioned hard disk to my Raspberry Pi 5 and therefore it was really necessary to set USB max current enable equals 1 to assure the hard disk normal operation. Within Android 14 we have done power supply and now we have to connect the data. I've used USB-C port to USB-A data cable to connect both Raspberry Pi 5s. On the Android 14 Raspberry Pi 5 I've used USB-C port and on Windows 11 Raspberry Pi 5 I just used a standard USB port. I've also added an interface which connects both power lines between both Raspberry Pi 5s through 1 kilo ohm resistor. So this means that regardless of the power state of any of the Raspberry Pi 5s there cannot be any kind of high current flowing through any of the USB port. Now let's set up the operating systems. In Android 14 USB tethering must be enabled, which you can only do after interconnecting both Raspberry Pi 5s through the mentioned USB ports. But this is just like connecting Windows 11 Raspberry Pi 5 to a smartphone, so I'm not going to any more details. The next thing is to verify USB connection in Windows 11. Open control panel 
and navigate to device manager open the device manager and find r and dis device in the tree without a device driver now open it select driver pad and click update driver now select browse my computer for driver software next click let me pick a list of device drivers on my computer select microsoft in the left list and then in the right list search for usb r and dis adapter driver and install it a new network device would have been created on a Raspberry Pi 5 running Windows 11 and you would be able now to access the internet through Raspberry Pi 5 running Android 14 just like with your smartphone but the major difference is that this connection is 425 megabits per second this is about the maximum that USB 2.0 connection can do and it is very reliable because it is made through an Ethernet connection and you are not dependent on any kind of condition with Wi-Fi networks in your vicinity however if you want to make a connection through Wi-Fi to a Wi-Fi router you can also do it then just enable Wi-Fi tethering on your Raspberry Pi that's running Android 14 or any kind of Android that provides this functionality. In essence, it is not really important whether you install Google Play Store or any kind of additional functionality on Android. It is enough to have a basic setup. Now let's talk about the most interesting part, how it works. At least on my experience, this kind of connection is much more reliable and much faster than the one that I can make with my smartphone. I was able to install Google Chrome and many other softwares that are available for ARM architectures on Windows 11 from Microsoft Store and other sources. For example, I've also installed Final 2X program, which enables you to enlarge any kind of JPEG or PNG picture resolution by two to four times. But this is far from being the only software that you can install on your Windows 11 Raspberry Pi 5. This is just one of that you can find on the internet with software that is native to ARM64 architecture on Windows 11. Thank you for watching. Press like and subscribe buttons if you've liked the video. The next video is coming soon. Thank you.